How are you doing guys? Welcome to week three of 2021. Uh, Dying at home, thank you so much for your support. Another sellout, smile to ear to ear. Thank you so much for all the support. Some more friends to have in the boxes this week, uh, friends and family, so thank you so, so much. Also, me and Beth have in the boxes this week as well, uh, because we just thought it would be good to see what 2021 is all about with Dying at home. And uh, this week is an awesome week. I'm really happy, or me and Mike are really happy with how the week went. So let's progress and jump straight into it. So guys, we've gone back. Uh, we've been a few weeks since we've done a white loaf, so a nice country white loaf proves it beautifully. Is that the same recipe as always? Just the white flour seems to prove a little bit, uh, a little bit more than the, uh, the granary flour. Uh, 180 degrees, five minutes with that. Pop it in. Obviously, enjoy that with your starter or starting zone just before. And the iconic Marmite butter. You know what to do, guys. As soon as your box arrives, keep it out of room temperature and decently warm place, and the butter can soften and it'll go deliciously well with your bread. Strategy startling guys, nice Asian twist today. Someone's birthday who's booked a box and they requested an Asian themed sort of uh, menu. Um, I do what I can to start a proper Asian sort of take on a chicken sweet corn broth. We've used braised beef shoe because I just love the fact uh, that what, what, what beef brings to the soup and also the fact that the soup is also made with some beef stuff as well. The vegetarians would done like a seaweed style dashi, uh, so you obviously have that. First note. Uh, you'll see when you uh, when you get your uh, your consomme or your your, your 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 broth, it's like jellified. Now basically, the meat one will have a little bit of meat fat on top. Absolutely fine. Just heat it, to, you know, boil it up. Uh, you're going to cook your noodles in there anyway. But that's obviously that's where the flavour is at. And obviously, the the, the natural uh, sort of setting agent from the bones will obviously set your soup. So don't be worried about that at all. That, that, that basically equals flavour. Uh, for the uh, vegetarian one, you might have a similar type of waffle. That's because of the natural gelatin. In, uh, found in, in seaweed, so that obviously will set that as well. So don't worry on either accounts. So you have your pot of uh, stock, you have your pot of noodles. These are ramen noodles that are very lightly dressed in sunflower, uh, in, in sesame oil to obviously keep them nice and separate. They're going to be reheated into your stock. A beautiful, we, we call it denatured. So we just very, we've steamed it for one minute. Now obviously bean sprouts are in there, so they need to be cooked. So bean sprouts, uh, some sugar snaps, red onion red pepper and a little bit of coriander in there as well. That's at room temperature, so keep that next to the uh, next to your butter to come to room temperature. A delicious chili oil. I have one of the instructions that it is spicy, so guys, just obviously if you can handle spice, go for it. But just, just start off with a little bit. Your braised beef shit, which you've just seasoned with a little bit of soy sauce and some parsley in there as well for a fleck of colour. And then your barbecued corn. This is, a, as you can see, it's a, it's a very much of a DIY type of dish. So it's, it's totally up to you how you want to plate it, guys. I'm not going to show you how to do it because it's super simple. I'm simply going to reheat that into a pan and it's piping hot, so that's the beef sheet. I'm going to heat the, um, uh, the ramen broth up until it obviously comes to a nice uh, simmer. Pop my noodles into warm food for 30, 40, 50 seconds, however long. I'm going to serve that at room temperature along with my corn and then chili oil to finish. Jobs are good. So join me when all this is, when all this is reheated and I'll go through the plating, etc. with you. Okay, so see a little bit. Okay guys, so it's all been reheated. So the reason why I've said the beef in the pan is because with the spoon, you can obviously sort of soften it down because essentially we've, we've flaked it completely down. So it's a lot easier in the pan, but as you can see, it's slightly dried out on the outside. So just be careful, we're just doing a nice low heat in the smallest pan possible. You can start off in the microwave if you would like to, but we just want to ensure that that beef has come to, come to the right temperature. There's your broth uh, with obviously your, your noodles inside, which will heat through straight away. Obviously we've tried to separate every single noodle with probably about 5,000 noodles that we've cooked. So to make sure that some of them, if they are clumped together, to make sure you give them a little bit longer, obviously to reheat. Uh, your uh, room temperature salad, along with your room temperature roasted corn, and then your chili oil as well. So again, guys, it's totally up to you. I would, my only reason for plating in this sort of way is because essentially, whatever you put in there, you're gonna go dive in head first straight in and just open it all up but if you want it to look neat to start with I would certainly put your beef on the bottom because it's probably the most um, least attractive sort of garnish for this particular dish itself and I'll pop your noodles on top which almost camouflage it so if you're cooking it for your partner or, or, or whoever you can sort of uh, tell them to sort of really rip into the dish itself uh, once, um, once you've plated it quite a lot of salad in there, I think this is for one person, there's quite a lot, so use obviously what you uh, what you like. And your sweet crunch because it goes so well with what a miso soup really. You'll smell, you'll smell the smokiness the moment it starts to 
warm through slightly. And then with it, obviously put it into a, uh, into a little jug if you would like to, if you prefer. Very gently, as I always say with the broth, just pour it nice and slowly simply because you have uh, you don't want to congeal it with the, with the beef. You want it to look quite you know, really sharp and delicious. You can't even see the beef now. So there's the dashi, there's the consomme, which we've cooked in. Easy chili oil, and again, I mean, I, I'm, I love spice. From Birmingham, got raised on, in, on Indian food, so the odd chili is absolutely fine with me. Spit that with there, guys, and there we are. You're encouraged to sort of break straight into the middle of it and just have it like a, like a, like a soup, like a broth, essentially, and it will really pack a, pack a beautiful flavour, and I really hope you enjoy your starter, which is obviously braised beef shit, your Asian-style salad, beautiful ramen noodles, and your beef uh, dashi broth. Guys, enjoy. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed your starter, proper flavour hit to get the taste buds going for the main course, which is a beautiful poached piece of chicken. Uh, we've come to the assumption because I think a few, few of the guys, a uh, few of the um, customers couldn't distinguish the difference. I'm just gonna, just gonna pop that, it's quite noisy, I wanna make sure one thing goes, one thing goes on. Uh, so this one is a poached chicken without the skin because they couldn't distinguish which was the skin side. And to be fair, once we do poach it, uh, it almost goes the same sort of colour. So this is a skinless piece of breast, which we've um, which we've poached again, exactly the same, but uh, to obviously, to obviously for you to guys to roast up, but it roasts at blue to pork without any skin, so I'm, I'm, I'm really, really happy with it. There's a little bit of cooking residue because we cook it in a little bit of oil, but also there's some thyme and garlic, and you can add that to the uh, to the pan later, which I'll, I'll show you exactly how to do that, but just very carefully just get that thyme and garlic out because it is, it is all flavour at the end of the day cooked in it so it's a nice bit of juices. Next we get a beautiful um, parsnip with sesame seeds. We've just uh, we've just cooked these in a water bath with a beautiful maple maple and sesame seeds so it's ready to roast which we'll obviously do next. A beautiful buttery roasted parsnip puree so again like we always do with a puree especially in the winter we uh, we ensure that we sort of burn all our zets so basically you take the, take the butter to a brown consistency and then put the parsnips in. It gives a beautiful nuttiness and it goes perfectly well with, uh, with, with the roasted parsnips. Charbroiled spring onion, self-explanatory. A beautiful chicken and tarragon crumble, which will have a nice bit of texture and equally some flavour. And then we've got a chasseur sauce. Now chasseur sauce is, is traditionally chicken with, uh, with mushroom and tomato. Obviously we're not going to pack it all with that, so we've roasted the mushrooms um, off at the start of the sauce. We've also put mushrooms into the chicken sauce and all the chicken stock. And we've also put a, sh a shed load of tarragon in there as well, so you get a delicious tarragon-y sort of aniseedy note, which goes so, so well with the chef's sort of sauce. And most importantly, the tomatoes. We've put three kilo of fresh San Mizzano uh, tomatoes in here, and this sauce is absolutely proper, like proper delicious. And a quick reheat with that. So come and join me guys over here, uh, because all we need to do is just pop that into the microwave. That's at room temperature, and then we just pop that into the stove. Otherwise, we do a nice little roast them in a pan. So come over to me, and I'll show you exactly how we're going to reheat this uh, onto a tray, guys. Okay. So with your pan, so it's, a, it's a gentle heat, but it's been on for about five minutes. So I want to make sure obviously that it comes up to a nice heat. So I'll turn that off because we don't need it on anymore. We haven't seasoned the chicken at all. If you have any of the red pieces here, nothing to worry about at all. All it is is where the knuckle was on. It may have had a little bit of connective tissue that's gone into there. So again, any red marks, you've got nothing to worry about. This this product is fully cooked, so there's nothing to worry about at all. Nice bit of salt on there. I tend to put a little bit of pepper of chicken, but at the end, I don't particularly like to break the burn it too much because obviously chicken's a lot more of a delicate meat in comparison to beef, lamb, or venison, which I think pepper works really well. So a little bit of salt, top and bottom, isn't it? As I said to you before, it hasn't been seasoned, so please do make sure you do season it because it will enhance the flavour. Just grab a spoon as well. So I've got a little bit of butter, as always. And I've also got, um, obviously I'm going to put my thyme and my garlic in there as well, near and near. We only want to caramelise it very gently. We don't want to caramelise it too, too heavily. Just so it starts to get a little bit of colour, we'll flip it over, then we'll put the parsnips in there as well, just to get the parsnips used to a little bit of heat. And, um, and that will obviously give us a nice head start when we do roast them and put them into the, uh, into the oven. And also, because they've been made, maple glazed, uh, my food actually put a little bit of the maple glaze in the bottom as well, so we'll add that to the pan because all goes down the same way and I want to try and enhance those flavors as much as possible. So just a bit of oil in there. You can start to see it starting to cut up really nicely if you can see that nice and brown there. So pop that still so we can take it a little bit a little bit heavier. I'm just going to turn the, uh, the gas up a little bit there just to get that 
quicker so I don't waste too much of your time. We'll put our parsnips in now. We'll also put our thyme and garlic in there now as well. Get those juices to heat for a couple of seconds. Two knobs of butter will suffice, that's absolutely fine. Once that's gone underneath, that's a bit of butter underneath there. Then we'll flip that over. Beautiful. And then we'll move in the bag. Parsley, if you're good with the maple syrup, will start to colour straight away because that's obviously the sugar in them. Put all the rest of the residue of maple in there, that'll start to caramelise, which is just delicious. I'll show you the pan now. So you can start to see all that thyme is caramelising, all your parsley is starting to get a beautiful colour on them, and then your chicken underneath will be starting doing the business as well. That's just two knobs of butter, that's it, simple as that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to transfer it to this tray back again. It's just to get these vegetables and the chicken used to that heat. That's all it is. Okay, so that's probably nice on that side, nice on that side. Take the pizza. In there. Thyme and garlic, some of your chicken. And then your sesame seeds, some of your parsnips, just like that. And then your spring onion in there and that goes into the oven, look how simple that is, that's done. It goes into the oven, but this will probably take about eight minutes because essentially it's cooked we just need to make sure the heat is regenerating into the chicken. That'll probably take about eight minutes at home, maybe between 10 and 12. If you've got a really super hot oven, eight minutes is absolutely perfect. So remember, we're going to take it out and rest it for two to three minutes as well to ensure that heat is penetrating right through. So join me in eight minutes and we'll go through baiting. Okay guys, so this has been in the oven for eight minutes and it's also had about a four minute rest, okay? Because the tray is obviously piping hot out of the oven, the residual heat of the tray will be keep that warm perfectly. You don't need to cover it with foil or anything, it's absolutely fine. If for whatever reason you do want to ensure that your parsnips and your spring onions are at an absolute raging hot, you can take the chicken off and then leave that in the oven with the door or a jar so it's actually fully hot. It's totally up to you, but I assure you it'll be hot enough. As you can see, the chicken is obviously still working in the sink, and it's been resting for four minutes and the steam is coming everywhere. I'm going to just carve that obviously for, for the video. Roll those parsnips to the uh, took on a lovely colour, as has the spring onion as well. All absolutely delicious. Then the um, parsnip puree is 30 seconds. The, the containers are fine in the in the in the, uh, in the micro. The lids last all of five seconds, but the uh, the puree is absolutely fine. The sauce is just sticking over on the back there. Uh, there is some fresh tarragon in there as well, which you will see which will melt, uh, melt beautifully into the sauce. And that's it. We're ready to go. So I'm just going to carve this up. Please don't do what I'm going to do. This is for Instagram, which is wrong. I'm just going to neaten it up slightly. Don't neaten it up either side and chuck it in a bit. I hate that. Just, just carve it properly and just, just carve it in half. Because the waste, the waste of it, we do it in the restaurant. It's like, why does it make it taste any different? Carving it any neater. But it does look a bit, it does look a bit better. So there we are, guys. And there we are. Cut that up well and you can have this. It's absolutely, you know, it's just absolutely delicious. Okay, so chicken, both breasts. And do a little bit of a, crisscross yin yang, same with the beautiful parsley puree. That will be side as well, you can do whatever you want with this, I see loads every week people doing sort of, those sort of drags, which is absolutely fine. I'm the only person eating it, so my fingers are, uh, I think it's absolutely fine. Not quite heavy with the, uh, Parsnips, these are three smaller ones. If you have two, which means they're obviously a hell of a lot larger. And you're spinning it on top. I'm not forgetting your crumble. Chicken skin crumble, which is absolutely wonderful. Has a nice vibrancy of colour as well, nice flavour of colour. Pop that one obviously on the inside. That one's going to be dressed as well. There we are. And then finally, beautiful sauce, which I'm just going to pour straight in the middle. Chasseur style sauce. Absolutely wonderful. As well. There we are, guys. This week's beautiful main course of your poached chicken with your tarragon crumble, take on chasseur, parsnips, roasted parsnips with sesame, parsnip puree, and your uh, charred spring onion for nice and lovely flavour as well. Guys, enjoy that. That looks fantastic. I'm probably going to have it for my lunch right now. Cheers, guys. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed your main course and straight onto dessert, which is a beautiful uh, banana and pink and sponge. This will probably come to you quite firm, nothing to worry about. 
much because we've obviously put maple oil, so we've obviously we've put maple syrup through the recipes of sugar and it just sets up a little bit harder, so nothing to worry about, nothing that 30 seconds in the microwave will not sort out. Okay, so there's whole pecans in there, uh, sorry, chopped pecans in there, there's also some whole bananas, obviously blended down into it. Um, one of my favourite sort of sponges, absolutely delicious. Here is a nice pecan crumble, which is obviously just a roasted crumble with roasted pecans through. This is a, a passion fruit savion, so essentially it's like a, almost like an anglaise, like a custard, but instead of using milk and cream, we've used pa uh, passion fruit puree, so it's really zingy and goes really, really well with not only the banana sponge, but more importantly the white chocolate and uh, white miso ice cream, uh, which I know is a little bit different, uh, but the white miso essentially is just a seasoning, which gives this delicious sort of rich sort of umami flavour to a dessert, which again, if you put salt into a dessert, it works perfectly. So I'm just going to pop that into the microwave for 30 seconds while I talk for the rest with you. Super simple. So you'll get um, so you'll get a nice little tub. Cheers, Mike. You get a nice little tub, obviously labelled with your miso ice cream in the centre. Uh, but I'm going to for the for the uh, for the picture. I'm going to use obviously the ready churn one. This is probably really I've never made miso. I've never made this ice cream before. It's probably the best ice cream that we've made here for dining at home. And his menu, to be fair, is, is, is way up there as well. Really, really pleased with obviously how it comes out as well. So, um, three seconds on that. So I'm going to grab the sponge and I'm going to go through the plating with you straight away. So, there are. so the outside, as I said, was quite, was quite sort of sugary. So it's super soft, steamy inside, absolutely beautiful. So pop that to one side. And if you crumble, that's just the rest of your ice cream on. It's super simple. We've got quite a, an iconic way of doing them now. Uh, the desserts. I was only really happy with the fact that we do a nice sponge, beautiful ice cream, beautiful sauce. It's just what more do you want for what more do you want for your um, for your dessert, you know what I mean? So a nice spoon of your miso ice cream and then passion fruit savion. It is nice and thick, definitely at room temperature. Do not heat this at all. It's obviously made with fresh egg yolk, so if you do heat it, don't heat it too much simply because it will um, it's got a chance of curdling. And that's just on top and that'll cut through the richness and the creaminess of the ice cream and there's your sponge to the left hand side super simple beautiful end it'll, it'll almost revitalize your palate again um, so you're not leaving on such a heavy deep note but if you did want to leave on a heavy deep note and a really deep indulgent we've obviously got the uh, the beautiful this is about as iconic as the marmite butter beautiful fruit and nut fudge made with milk chocolate this is Mikey's signature it's absolutely delicious just very simply enjoy a little bit of, uh, of mould and sea salt. Don't use table salt, mould and sea salt if you would like to. If not, it's delicious on its own with a, a nice little digestive. Uh, so if it's a nice alcoholic one or a tea or coffee, totally up to you. Guys, that concludes week three. Another sellout, Valentine's week next week, which is, I am looking forward to it. We're also selling 150 boxes for two people, which is way more than me and Mike have ever done. So yeah, I hope it goes well. I think we've roped in a cavalry for next week. But uh, anyway, listen, have a fantastic weekend. Like what you see, all the February menus are obviously still available over the next week. And also the first March one is available as well, guys. So thank you all for your support. I love you all. Dine at home, stay safe, and see you next week.